Good Tuesday morning, everyone, and welcome once again to the Daily Baptist Bread Devotional. And this is your host, Brother Scott, bringing you these devotionals each and every day as I'm able to. And so it's another beautiful day out here in Florida, at least. Not sure where uh, you're at, but uh, we should always be looking to the Lord and trusting Him, especially with what's going on today, and keep praying for our leadership in this country and uh, realize that we still have our freedoms and uh, we need to not let them take that away from us and uh, uh, stop uh, uh, listening to the uh, crazy news media all the time. And um, if you're spreading uh, news that you shouldn't be spreading instead of the Bible, well, then you probably should just knock it off because uh, when we start uh, putting stuff up other than what God wants us to put up, then we start uh, giving in to them too. So, I mean, I know you want us to be aware of certain things, but... Uh, we should be telling people about Jesus, even in our um, uh, social media pages, amen, and uh, keeping it focused on that, because when those people die, whatever they die of, it could be a car accident, it could be this uh, crazy virus or whatever it is going around, but when they die and they step on eternity, and we didn't tell them about Jesus because we were too busy trying to warn them about uh, what's going on around here instead of uh, giving them the truth, well, that doesn't help their soul much, does it? No, it doesn't, so... Let's make sure that we're telling about Jesus and trying to stay away from the craziness, amen? And uh, stop uh, um, not saying you're uh, uh, giving in and being a fear monger yourself, but um, sometimes we just need to know what we're just to say and, and to uh, talk about Jesus and tell him that, hey, no matter uh, how you die, you're going to die and step out into eternity one day. And if you're uh, dead in trespasses and sin without Jesus Christ, well... Uh, you're going to end up in uh, hellfire, so that's going to be ten times worse than anything that could happen to here on this earth. Amen. So uh, trust Jesus today and hope that's an encouragement to you. And um, uh, not trying to be mean or hateful, but we should be spreading the gospel. Not uh, um, And yeah, I guess it's okay to warn people uh, sometimes, but uh, make sure you put the gospel in there somehow along with it. Amen. So let's do it. All right, so... Today's topic for Tuesday, March 17th, 2020, is titled, Know Thyself, and it's from 2 Samuel 12, 7a, and this is um, uh, David, and when he uh, committed adultery with Bathsheba, and uh, says, And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man, 2 Samuel 12, 7a, and uh, you can go read that whole account, looks like we're going to be... Uh, Covering it uh, in this topic today a little bit. So, <clears throat> the author today is Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. And as we start here, he writes, David sinned with Bathsheba, had her husband Uriah killed, and perhaps uh, patted himself on the back with his uh, self... Uh, let me read that again. Uh, David sinned with Bathsheba had her husband Uriah killed and perhaps patted himself on the back with his self-gratifying uh, cover-up. Okay, that seems... Uh... Oh, okay, see, alright, I'm reading it wrong. Alright, so let's start again. So, it says here, I was reading it uh, the wrong way here. Um, so David sinned again uh, with Bathsheba, and then he had her husband Uriah killed, and perhaps uh, David patted himself on the back for uh, with his self-gratifying cover-up. All right, I was getting a little confused. I'm like, huh? All right, sometimes you read these things the wrong way. So, uh, yeah, this is all David trying to uh, pat him, maybe pat himself on the back with his self-gratifying cover-up. And uh, Nathan enters the throne room unannounced and offers an illustration ad, of adversity, uh, greed, and injustice. And that's 2 Samuel 12, 1 through 4. So let's go read that. 2 Samuel 12, 1 through 4. <clears throat> All right, so 2 Samuel 12. And let's read the first part of this. <clears throat> All right, so 12, verses 1 through 4, it says, And the Lord sent Nathan unto David. So the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him, and said unto him, 
There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat, and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. Uh, and there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared uh, to take of his own flock, and of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb, and dressed it for the man that was come to him. So that was uh, the illustration there by uh, Nathan. And uh, continuing on here, it says, David, in a rage, demands the death penalty for the culprit and a restoration of the four lambs for the one in verse number six. So let's read that. Verse uh, six, uh, or actually it would be verse five. It says, And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, uh, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. So, David is uh, very upset and wroth about this. And then Nathan points a long, bony finger in the face of the king, and profoundly pronounces, Thou art the man. And then he continues on and says, An old writer I have been reading describes this encounter as, When Nathan introduces David to David. <laughs> yeah. To David's eternal credit, he responded to the pro prophet's rebuke, repented of his sin, and even paid the price for it with no complaint. And so should we all, when we uh, sin against the Lord. Uh, David's son wrote, Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Proverbs 9, 8b. And then he continues on, on, and he says, I think it would be good and appropriate if our pastor or preacher would introduce us to ourselves, or maybe a good friend would speak the truth in regard to the error of our ways, and we would see self as others see us, <laughs> and even examining yourself. And we tend to want to point the fingers at everybody else's sin, but we tend to want to excuse our own sins and stuff, even after we're saved, where we still tend to fall into temptation and... Uh, and go into that temptation and fall into that sin <clears throat> and then repent after it when we should be fleeing from it. Uh, so continuing on, he says, Then we would react or respond as David did in Psalm 51. So let's go there, Psalm 51, and read that and see what it says here. Psalm 51. Alright, so let's go and read Psalm 51, and it says here, um, this is to the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba. And he says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me throughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned. Yes, so we only sin against the Lord, uh, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, uh, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me know to know wisdom. Uh, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a new heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. 
Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors the wit thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me uh, from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. Amen. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open now my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt, wilt not despise. Do good in thy uh, pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt and whole burnt offering, then shall thou offer bullocks upon thine altar. So that was uh, Psalm 51, and uh, let's uh, go back here and reread this here again. And he said, I'll reread this uh, part here. Uh, Brother Tim Green says, he says, I think it would be good and appropriate if our pastor or preacher would introduce us to ourselves. Uh, or maybe a good friend would speak the truth in regard to the error of our ways, and we would see self as others see us. Then we would react or respond as David did in Psalm 51, which I just read. And as we conclude here, he says, What prompted my thoughts on this subject was my reading of the genealogy of Joseph, Mary's husband, in Luke 3.31. David's name uh, or David named one of his sons Nathan, perhaps in honor of the prophet uh, Nathan, who introduced him to himself. This boy shows up directly in the lineage of the stepfather of Jesus Christ. Know, uh, know thyself, and it might help your family. <laughs> Amen. So let's learn to know ourselves and examine ourselves and make sure that we're walking the right way, the ways of the Lord. And uh, praise the Lord for that. So let's uh, know ourselves better and that we're uh, still sinners, even though we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, that we're still tempted to walk into sin and we should learn to flee from it. And those times that we uh, tend to sin, whether it be a sin that we know of or a sin that we don't know of, um, we should always confess it to the Lord. And sometimes it's good to name those sins and, and uh, get them out in the open to the Lord and ask them for forgiveness and then uh, stop doing them. Amen. So praise the Lord. All right. Well, that was uh, the end of our topic for today on Know Thyself. And if you're just joining me, I encourage you to go back and listen to this in its entirety because it's pretty good. And now let us get into the psalm reading. And we left off last time. And Psalm chapter 86, let's see, did I read 86 already? 85, 86, 87, uh, okay, I think we're on 80, uh, yeah, I think we're on 88 now, so we'll start reading on Psalm 88. And it says here, a song or psalm for the sons of Korah to the chief musician upon Mahilath, uh, Linaneth Noth, uh, Mashiel of Haman the Ez Ezraite. And it says here, O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear unto my cry, for my soul is full of troubles, yeah, and my life draweth nigh unto the, the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength, free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness in the depths, or in the deeps. Uh, thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves, Selah. Thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up, and I cannot come forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. 
Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Selah? Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave? Or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark? And thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But unto thee have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer the, thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me, and mine acquaintance into darkness. Who? <clears throat> Psalm 89. Meshiel of Ethan, uh, the Ez Ezra Ezraite. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Amen. Here we go. Some happy stuff here. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. So let's sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Praise God. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, Mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed uh, will I establish forever and build up the, thy throne to all generations, Selah. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? <laughs> Nobody. Uh, who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints, and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him, so the Lord should be reverenced. Uh, o Lord of God of O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee? Thou ruest the raging of the sea, when the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Uh, thou hast broken Rahab in pieces, as one that is slain. Thou hast scattered thine enemies with thy strong arm. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. The north and the south thou hast created them. Tabor and Hermon shall rejoice in thy name. Thou hast a mighty arm, strong in thy hand, and high in thy right hand. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense, amen, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. Then thou speakest in vision to thy Holy One, and say, sayest, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. Uh, I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him, with whom my hand shall be established. Mine arm also shall strengthen him. Amen. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face, and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea, and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Amen. Is he the rock of your salvation? Amen. Uh, also I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. 
My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law, and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes, and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with the rod, and their iniquity with stripes." Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon, and as, the fa as a faithful witness in heaven, Selah, but thou hast cast off and abhorred, thou hast been wroth with thy anointed, thou hast made void the covenant of thy servant, uh, thou hast profaned his crown by casting it to the ground, thou hast broken down all his hedges, thou hast brought his strongholds to ruin, all that pass by the way spoil him, he is a reproach to his neighbors. Thou hast set up the right hand of his adversaries. Thou hast made all his enemies to rejoice. Thou hast also turned the edge of his sword, and hast not made him to stand in the battle. Thou hast made his glory to cease, and cast his throne down to the ground. The days of his youth hath, uh, hast thou shortened. Thou hast covered him with shame. Selah. How long, Lord? Wilt thou hide thyself forever? Shall thy wrath burn like fire? Remember how short my time is. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? What man is he that liveth, and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Selah. Lord, where are thy former loving kindnesses, which thou uh, swearest unto David in thy truth? Remember, Lord, the reproach of thy servants, how I do bear in my bosom the reproach of all the mighty people. Wherewith thine enemies have reproached, O Lord, wherewith they have reproached the footsteps of thine anointed. Blessed be the Lord for evermore. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So, blessed be the Lord for evermore. Amen and amen. All right. Well, that will wrap it up for today. And uh, tomorrow we'll be covering chapters 90 and 91 for the psalm reading. And the topic for tomorrow is titled, Too Highly Esteemed. So hope you'll come back for that. And thank you always for watching these videos. And uh, share them and um, you can share them with your friends and family. And hope it's an encouragement to you and uh, anyone that's watching this. And if you don't have YouTube, um, if you don't have Facebook, or you know someone that doesn't have Facebook and you'd like to uh, share this with them, well, I post these up on my YouTube page also, because I know not everybody has Facebook or likes to get on Facebook, but we'll get on YouTube sometimes and watch YouTube videos, so it's uh, good to watch uh, stuff uh, that's talking about the Lord and <clears throat> how we should always uh, glorify Him and put self aside and... Uh, we should always decrease and let the Lord increase. Amen. So I hope you'll do that today. And I'll be back here in a few minutes to give you the daily Bible reading as we finish up Joshua. So hope you'll come back for that. And again, thank you for watching. And if you're not saved, well, today is the day of salvation because you never know what the next moment may bring or even the next day may bring. And you're not guaranteed the next day or even the next moment. You could... Uh, uh, pass away right now and step out into eternity and if you do so without Christ well you'll die in your trespasses and sin and end up in hellfire and don't want to see you go there friend want to see you saved so hope you'll uh, recognize that you're a sinner and that you sin against the holy God and you need a savior and that is why Jesus Christ came down here to this earth to die for our sins be buried and rise again the third day according to scripture and he did that for all mankind so we might be saved. Amen. So hope and pray you'll trust him today. All right. Well, may the Lord richly bless you. And until next time, this is Brother Scott signing off. So see you all later.
Bye-bye for now.